Shabbat Shalom to you friends, brothers and sisters. Today I'm here to present to you the black Yehoshua, the black Messiah, or Yehoshua the black Messiah. I wish to tell you that if you want to learn about Yehoshua's genealogy, Yehoshua's family, who was who in the Renewed Covenant, New Testament writings, then you should get this book, Beit Yehoshua, the son of Zadok, the son of Daud. This book will detail many, many details that, that many of you have been searching for all these years and the questions haven't been coming forth from the church. So this book will help you to understand the relationships of what happened to Miriam after Yehoshua's death and resurrection. Who was, was uh, John the son of Zebedee? Who was Kepha, Peter? Well, how were their relations with Yehoshua? Who was Matthew? Who was Luke? Was Luke a Gentile? All these things are answered in this book. And the other thing that I'd like to tell you is that this Abrahamic faith, natural and Hebraic study scriptures, this is a, the New Testament, the Renewed Covenant. You want to go to my website to acquire these things at www.abrahamic-faith.com. We will give the address in this video at the end and during this segment so you know what I'm telling you. As our subject today revolves around the, the, common, the, the common title that many of you people use, Jesus. And myself, as you know, I don't use that title so much. I use the term Yehoshua. And some of you may use Yeshua or Yeshua, and these are the, the variant names used for the Messiah. Messiah's real name was Yehoshua. That is another discussion that I don't really want to get into. However, what I want to get into is what color was the Messiah. I think that's fairly important. Why is it so important that I tell you the color of the Messiah? Well, I've got a book coming out called, the, called Yehoshua the Black Messiah. You can get that book from www.abrahamic-faith.com. Why it's so important is, if it wasn't important, why would the Almighty Creator bring him into a certain family with a certain lineage? Why, if it's not important? So this is the answer to that question. It's very important. It's very important for us to know because that helps us to identify his family, his culture, his people, and also who we are in the whole scheme of things. Yehoshua, my friends, if we note, as a baby, he had to flee. In Matthew chapter 2 verse 13, if you remember, he had to flee with his mother and father. They were revealed in a dream that they had to leave Israel and go to Egypt. If you look on this map that I've got down here, you will notice that Egypt is here, which is due south to Israel and west. So they ended up in Egypt. The question that you should be asking is this, why did Yehoshua go to Egypt as a baby? Why, why not send him to some other distant land where he can't be found? If he's a white baby, if he's Caucasian, why send him to Egypt? Well, and why, and why, why couldn't Herodes, who was Adamite, would be able to trace him from Egypt? Very simple. Any historian who's got any worth will tell you that Egyptians, all Egyptians, ancient Egyptians were black. The, even the term Mitzrayim in the Hebrew means black face or burnt face. So if they were burnt face, if they were black faces, what face was of the baby Yehoshua? Was it a white face? Was it a black face? Well, why send him into Egypt? The answer is self-explanatory if you think about it. If he's a black baby, then if he goes to Egypt, he then mingles with the population, including his mother and father were black, of black skin, of African skin tone. We know this from the, from the scriptures, the identification the scripture gives us. I talk about these things in my book, The Black, the black Messiah, Yehoshua the Black Messiah. And I also show you in, intimate details about other, other things about Hebrew Israelites, things that they had that tells us their culture and their families. We know from one of the descriptions in Revelation chapter 1 verse 14 was that he had, he had uh, woolly hair. Now do white people have woolly hair? Any Caucasian person, any white person who has long hair, or short hair for that matter, will not have woolly hair. He will have straight hair. But Africans by definition have woolly hair. That is a proven fact, historically. Also notice that his feet were, were, were shown to be of bronze. What does bronze mean? Bronze, my friends, as you understand, bronze means that he was, he was of a darker complexion. He wasn't white. Bronze is a color identification of black people. 
Also, we are, we are told that Yehoshua had certain, certain other traits. So even if we use these similar traits, we can very easily identify Yehoshua. As I told you, that it was very easy for him to go to Egypt and mingle with the locals. And he was a baby. His, his, his parents could easily mingle with the locals, being black themselves. They would not be identified easily. That is why they stayed there. So when they were called out, when Herodes had died, then they were okay. So note that the other definition that most of you don't realize is that Israel today is said to be in the Middle East. Middle East is a definition of Israel in the 21st century, by the way. The term Middle East wasn't derived until 1928. And Middle East was made by Great Britain. They made the map of what you call Middle East today. It wasn't called Middle East back then. Ancient times, Israel was part of Africa, Northeast Africa. All these lands that you see down here on the map, for instance, Arabia was called East Africa. This is why the ancient Arabs in Arabia, the ancient Arabs were black. These were tribes that came from Sudan. They came from Western Africa. The Bejas, for instance, one of the tribes that in, in, inhabited Arabia, came from these regions in Western Africa. So therefore, my friends, these things are actually mentioned very, very clearly. These things are mentioned very, very clearly here. If you, if you notice, all these lands, are, they get a, a, a quite a detailed mention in the Hebrew scriptures. You often hear about Kush. Well, Kush is the area of not only Sudan, but Ethiopia. You know about the story of Queen of Sheba. The Bible talks about the Queen of Sheba. The Queen of Sheba ruled not only Ethiopia, also parts of Arabia, parts of Yemen she ruled. And Queen of Sheba had a son by King Solomon, who was also black. And that son then ruled in Ethiopia. And if you go back and check your histories, Menelik I was a son that ruled in Ethiopia. And then we had Menelik II. And we have Hele Selassie, which was a title given to the emperor in the, uh, in the early 19th century, 1930. So these people, if you look, they claim ancestry to true Israel. And indeed they are. So my friends, if you want to know more, my suggestion is that if you would like to know more, my suggestion is that you get the book Yehoshua, the Black Messiah, and you can learn more about these things. I'd like to thank you, your host Rabbi Simon Altaf. Shalom, shalom.